Hey guys, welcome to another day of Mishmas. So today we're gonna to be talking about my best in beauty for 2020. This has been such an interesting year, especially, well, for a lot of reasons, but uh, for makeup too, because I think a lot of our makeup wearing habits have changed over the course of this year, whether it's because we've been staying home or wearing a mask or whatever it is. At least I feel like my makeup wearing habits have changed uh, a little bit. And anyway, I just want to let you know a few things before we jump in. One, this is a collaboration with my very good friend, the glam Dr. Mona. We finally were able to collab again. She's been really busy. I've been really busy. It's just, it's just, it's been 2020. So anyway, we are collabing again. I will link to her video down below in my description box. Definitely check her out. Let her know I sent you over there. Tell her I said hello. And for this Best in Beauty 2020, I wanted to stick to products that were released this year. I will be doing a video later on in Mishmas where I'll be talking about like my ultimate, ultimate like favorite product in each category, which will be, you know, any product released at any time, just my ultimate favorites. So I thought for this Best in Beauty for 2020 that I would just simply talk about products that were released this year. For this particular year, I think we're at the point where so much makeup is released every single year that there's there's plenty to talk about. There's plenty to talk about. So that's kind of how I like try to focus my list. Um, I really tried to pick just one product in each category. That's it. I really wanted to give you like my ultimate, ultimate favorite product that was released in 2020. I definitely cheated. There are some like subcategories <laughs> that I created so that I could squeeze another product in. Um, there are some categories also where I have like two products, but I really try to narrow this down. So I'm gonna go in order of how I put my makeup on. So we're gonna go ahead and start with primer. And you guys know how much I love the Victoria Beckham Cell Rejuvenating Priming Moisturizer. Love it. That has been really like my favorite primer for more than a year now. But just this past year, she came out with another shade, which is golden. So her original priming moisturizer just had a little bit of a golden sheen to it, but it was pretty translucent. I think it does a really nice, you know, blurring and it's a really great moisturizer. It's just, it's beautiful on the skin. It feels great on the skin. And I really like how it primes my dry aging skin. So when she came out with golden, I was very excited. So this one has like a little bit of uh, a golden kind of bronze tint to it. And because it is a moisturizer, it's not like you're putting a bronzer all over your face. It's just a very, very light tint. And yes, that is what I have on my face today. And I will be doing um, cutaways of me actually applying these products so you can see them in action. So I do have the golden on my face. It gives me just enough of a hint of color that on those days where I'm feeling just a little bit sad and sallow, <laughs> in the complexion that this gives me a little bit of life, like a nice starting off point. So this is my primer pick for 2020. Okay, my foundation pick for 2020. This I think was the hardest. Yeah, this was definitely the hardest category for me to choose from. And I thought, oh, maybe he'll break it up into like matte foundations and then cushion foundations. And I thought, no, no, let's not do that to you guys. I just wanna name my absolute favorite, and that is the Kogendo Moisture Foundation. This is a reformulated foundation, which also had me kind of like, you know, questioning myself whether or not I should mention it uh, in this video, but I thought it's reformulated, it is new, it did come out this past year, and it is my favorite foundation release of 2020. So I can use shades 113 or 123. Today I have 123 on, it's a little bit deeper and I thought it went uh, better with the uh, Victoria Beckham Golden. Um, so I just have that all over my face. It is a buildable foundation. You can put on like a nice like kind of thin layer of it and get, a, you can put on uh, like a, you know, like a light layer and get like a light medium coverage and you can definitely build it up to like a medium. I like the light medium coverage. I, I prefer lighter coverage foundations. And there's something about this foundation that is so perfecting without coverage. And I think that that it's almost like an oxymoron. Like, well, what is what does that mean? <laughs> How do you perfect the skin if you're not actually covering up discoloration or uh, unevening of the skin? But it does that without this sort of like heavy pigmentation. You, you can still see the darker um, like age spots, sunspots on my face, um, but it does this evening out almost like a filter where your skin looks like skin, looks like your skin, but just, just a little bit better, <laughs> a little bit more perfected. It just looks 
a little, well, a lot smoother. I feel like my skin just looks really, really smooth underneath this foundation. And one of the best things about this foundation too is that it's a high definition foundation. And so it looks really, really great on camera, but it also looks great in daylight. It looks good you know, in dim indoor, like restaurant lighting. It just looks good like all the time everywhere. I don't feel like it ever looks cakey. I don't feel like it ever looks um, like too light. Like why did you bother putting a foundation on? It's just a your skin but better kind of foundation and it just feels great. It wears really great. It wears all day without any breaking up. I just love it. I love this foundation. So this is my pick for 2020. My concealer pick for 2020 is the Clinique Even Better Concealer. This one surprised me, I have to say. When it comes to Clinique, I always think that it is geared towards a very like younger crowd. I don't know why, that's just sort of uh, like the mental image I have of its customer, of their demographic. And so when I tried the concealer, I just kind of assumed that it was gonna be, you know, really light and probably not do that much. Not so, not so at all. This actually has a really lovely level of coverage. I wanna say it's like a medium, medium high if you put a little bit more on. This is a concealer that doesn't cake up. I feel like there are a lot of concealers out there where I have to be really careful with the amount of product I put on because it goes from looking good to looking really heavy and cakey very quickly. I don't have that problem with this concealer. It has a very creamy texture. The coverage is great and this little sponge in the tip, now mine looks pretty gross because I have been using it, is so wonderful and you'll see it in my cutaway here because I do have it applied um, around my eyes and I do use this sponge to blend it in. This sponge is great. I never ever ever really like the brushes or the sponges or the tools that are included um, with you know makeup products like you know the brush that's in an eyeshadow palette. I never use those. This is awesome. The sponge is really soft but there's a lot of like bounce back you know it's like squishy but it's not too soft where it, like it doesn't do anything really really awesome and then the actual concealer has this wand so very typical packaging but it's such a wonderful concealer it wears really really well i just so impressed with this one so impressed with concealer so so the shade that i have i believe it's one no it used to be on a sticker here which fell off i think the name is called alabaster and i can't remember the numbers. I think maybe it's like 10N, something like that. I will link it down below in my description box if you are curious, but I, yeah, I think the name's called Alabaster. But anyway, super impressed with this concealer and my pick for 2020. All right, powder. Surprisingly, I had no loose powder because I don't think there were any loose powders, at least none that I tried. Uh, no loose powders that I tried for this year. Isn't that weird? I don't know, maybe I missed one, but there are two pressed powders and I justified by picking two because one is a baked formula and one is a pressed powder. See how I cheated? One is a baked formula and one is a pressed, uh, pressed powder formula. Uh, so let me talk about the baked formula because uh, this came out earlier. I believe this came out this year. This is one that I was not sure, but I think this came out uh, early this year, like for spring. So I think this came out like February, March. Anyway, it's the Chantecaille Perfect Blur Finishing Powder. It's the one that came in their Hummingbird collection. And this is actually what I have applied around my eyes. Um, it has a really lovely like matte finish. There's no sparkly bits or shiny bits, but because it has this kind of like baked formula, there's like a certain creaminess to it. I just feel like it looks really lovely around the eyes because I don't like a lot of shine um, to set my under eyes especially. I like that on the matter side. I don't want it to look dry or anything, but I don't want any extra shine. Anyway, this is what I have around my eyes. It is, I mean, it really does blur that whole area. And I do like putting it here where I have um, larger pores, it definitely blurs your pores. It just makes your skin look so, so creamy. I love this powder. And then the other one I wanted to mention, the pressed powder formula one, is the new Sisley pressed powder. Now this is a reformulated uh, version of a pressed powder that they already had. And I feel like I tried their pressed powder in store. You know, they were kind of like applying some makeup on me and I didn't like it. I felt like it kind of just sat on my skin. So I was very curious about this powder when I tried it. And this I feel like is, it's, um, it's like the Chantecaille in a pressed powder formula, 
with a little bit more of like a like a demi satin kind of finish. There's a little bit more of a sheen to this powder, but because it's a pressed powder, I find it is a little bit easier to work with. With the Chantecaille baked products, you do have to use like a brush that really picks up product very, very easily. You can't really use kind of like a soft, fluffy kind of big powder brush. I find that I can't really pick up enough product. Um, but with the Sisley, because this is just you know, a typical pressed powder formula, you can use pretty much any brush with this. So I do find this one a little bit easier to work with than the Chantecaille, but the effect of both the Chantecaille and the Sisley powder is, oh, it's just beautiful. And because the sheen of this powder is so subtle, I do feel comfortable wearing this around my eyes, not a problem. Uh, but today I just have this brush kind of all over my face and I have other products on over it, but maybe down here you can see the finish of the powder. It's just the like the most subtle, subtle like satin sheen. It's beautiful, absolutely beautiful. So these are my two powder picks for 2020. So my bronzer pick for 2020, this was hard too. There were a lot of good bronzers that came out this past summer, but the one that I went with is definitely the one that I feel like I use the most. And it's the one that I just kind of reach for. And that is the Kosas Sun Show Bronzer. So I like to use light and medium. The light I like to use actually as a bronzer. So I will put it kind of on the high points of my face, like where the sun would hit my face. So like all over my forehead, over the bridge of my nose, um, I'll brush it over my cheeks before I put blush down. And then I'll use the medium, which is obviously a little bit deeper than the light. And I will use it a little bit more like a contour. I'll use it on the perimeter of my face. I'll use it, you know, in the hollows of my cheeks. So that's how I use the two different shades. But the formula of this is really, really creamy. I mean, you can almost see how creamy it is in the pan. There is like shea butter in here, which is one of my absolute favorite ingredients in skincare. It's just, it's wonderful. It's very nourishing for dry skin, again, which I have. And it has this gorgeous, gorgeous sheen. So I think you can probably see it right down here, like the really beautiful kind of glow that it has. It's just gorgeous. I just think it goes on really beautifully. I think it blends out really beautifully. That is the Kosas bronzer. Definitely my favorite from 2020. As for blush, this selection was actually really easy to make because I really wanted to focus on products that were released in 2020. So of course I picked the Wayne Goss uh, Vivid Azalea Weightless Veil Blush Palette. I have this on my cheeks today and I need just the littlest amount <laughs> the teensy tiniest amount to get all of this blush color. I do have a little something else on top, which I'll talk about in just a second. But what you see is like mainly this blush. I just love it. I love this color. I love this tone. And what is so surprising to me is when it comes to cheek products, I really like cheek products with a sheen, as you guys have just heard me talk about. And this is a matte blush but the color and the formula, I just feel like it blends out beautifully. It applies beautifully. The color itself is called shocking and it really is just gorgeous. Now I don't have this highlighter on today, but the highlighter in here is also really beautiful. It looks white in the pan, but it has this gold, slightly peachy kind of uh, sheen to it. It's really beautiful, really, really beautiful. So this pairing is gorgeous. And this is by far my favorite blush palette of Wayne Goss's. He has four of them, and I think my other favorite is the Blush Peony, but this one, the Vivid Azalea, it's my favorite. So the next product is kind of a cheat, but I kind of consider it, well, it's called an illuminating blush powder. So it's it's kind of a blush and it's kind of a highlight, and that's the Chanel, the illuminating blush powder. It was part of their holiday collection, and I have this pretty much dusted on the backs of my cheekbones here, like close to my hairline. And then I kind of buffed it in a little bit over the Vivid Azalea. And I used my Sonia G Smooth Buffer Brush. This brush and this illuminating blush is such a beautiful combo because it really brings out the shine in this product and it really gives it like a smooth glass-like finish. So I just have it lightly over here because I wanted to make sure you guys could see the Vivid Azalea, but I really do like buffing this over other blushes just to kind of give it a little bit of a, of a sheen. And while we're at it, this, this is the best brush that was released in 2020 by far. 
This little smooth buffer is basically like a mini version of one of my favorite Sony G brushes, which is the Face One brush. So I still use this if I'm gonna buff just all over my face and I need to do something uh, over big areas really quickly, I use the Face One. The smooth buffer is great just for the cheek area and that really is where I like to uh, focus my buffing. So I usually use a finishing powder and I'll just kind of go all over. Um, but if I really wanna like buff in a blush or buff in a highlight or just kind of blend out bronzer or something, this has been absolutely indispensable. And I'm so, so happy that she came out with this uh, smaller size. I think she could even come out with one like a little bit smaller. I think that would be awesome just to really get right in here. I like buffing this part of my uh, cheek area, like not exactly my under eye, not exactly my blush, but like right here, right where I basically have like larger pores. It's nice to kind of like buff in your powder there just to give it a really nice kind of sheen. Anyway, I'm going on and on, but this smooth buffer, the brush release of 2020. My highlight pick is one that I almost forgot about and I had to go back and check and see like when this came out. This actually didn't come out that long ago. I think it was just in the summer but this year has been so crazy. Anyway, it's the Guerlain uh, Meteorites Highlighting Palette. I really, really love this one. I love the compact, it's gigantic. Um, I love the fact that it has three different like shades in here. This one is a little bit too deep for me, but I can like mix it in with the white one over here and then I get kind of like a warm, a warmer toned uh, highlight. And then if I mix these two, I get like a cooler toned highlight. And then I can just use this one if I want something really, really bling. But today I mixed the white and the pink and that's what I have on my cheeks today. It just has such a beautiful shine. I love the formula of it. Very easy to pick up, very easy to lay down. You get, you know, it's like instant highlight. It's like a no brainer kind of palette. And I also love that it smells like the meteorites. It has that violet scent. I just, I just love it. I love it so, so much. Isn't that really pretty? I mean, I feel like it's not the, the brightest and the shiniest highlight I have, but it's, you know, like just enough. You know what I mean? It's like a little bit more than something subtle, but it's not like bling, like in your face. I think it's just a really nice level of shine. All right, moving on to the eye area. Um, I actually have two eyebrow products. <laughs> <laughs> you guys probably only, only have seen me use the Tom Ford Fiber Brow Gel, um, but there are two products that I uh, discovered this year, and I'm actually not sure if one of these came out in 2020. I think so. Anyway, they're so completely different, I thought I would mention both. But the first one is the Gucci Powder Eyebrow Pencil, and I have it in the shade number four, Brun. And the reason why I love this pencil is because, I think you can see on there, it almost has like a patina because it's a powder pencil. So it's not a gel or a coal or anything like that. It literally is like compressed powder. So when you apply it into your brows, which I have today, it's a very, very like soft effect. Obviously you can like keep drawing and drawing and drawing and get a very dark line, but it has a very, very soft touch. It blends out really easily. Um, and I love the idea of a powder pencil for the eyebrows because I I'm not one that likes a really bold, brow, um, but I do have areas in my brows that need to be filled in. I do like to use this pencil because it does have that like powdery effect and I just, I just think it looks nice. It has a softer appearance. So that's my eyebrow pencil pick for 2020. Um, my other eyebrow product uh, that I really love is this palette from Chanel. And you guys probably remember me using this quite a bit when I first got it, but I have it in the shade 03 Dark. And this is called the Brow Wax and Brow Powder Duo. Now, admittedly, I probably just use the Brow Wax when I come in here. When I first got this palette, I was using both. And I felt like I was giving myself a very, very bold brow, which again, not really my thing. I like a little bit of a softer look, but I love this brow wax. So today I use the Gucci pencil. And then what I do is I run this little teeny tiny spoolie <laughs> I run it over the wax and then I just kind of brush it into my brows. 
controls them, gives them a little bit of pigment, and I really do like the effect a lot. And this is another like rarity here. I actually like using the tool that is in this palette <laughs> for this brow wax. It just fits perfectly because it's teeny tiny and I can just place the spoolie on there and just kind of move it around a little bit just to pick up a teensy bit of product. Um, and it goes on beautifully. So this brow palette is really wonderful, love it. Okay, eyeshadows. I really cheated. I cheated a lot here, <laughs> but I have a big palette pick, I have a small palette pick, and then I have single eyeshadow picks. So my large palette pick is actually what I have on my eyes, and that is the Natasha Denona Glam Palette. I love this palette. I think I went on and on and on about this palette when I first got it and used it a lot. Um, of course, I started playing around with other eyeshadow palettes, so this has fallen to like the back of my vanity, but I love this palette. It really is just absolutely gorgeous. I love every single shade in here. I think this is Natasha Denona's best palette. I also like that there's basically only two formulas in here, the matte and the metallic. There are some shades that are a little bit more sparkly, or maybe just one shade. I do know this inner corner one. I think this could be like a chroma crystal shade, but basically all you have in here are like mattes and metallics, which I think are her two best uh, formulas. And just, just look how beautiful that is. This really is, and you guys know me and my obsession with like metallic taupes, but this really is like a palette of one and done shadows. So what I did today was I put this crease color down, this matte crease color down, and then I used this center eyelid shade. I used that basically from like my inner corner over my the center of my eyelid. And then I took this outer eyelid shade and I put that, you know, basically on the outer corner of my lids and I blended that over. And then I took this blend shade, this matte shade here, and I just dragged that across like the top edge of my shadows just to kind of blend that out a little bit. And then I took this inner corner shade and I just popped that right like in my tear duct area, so right on the insides there. And that is what I did for um, the eye look, and I love this palette, I really, really do. It really just, you know, speaks to me. <laughs> the color story really speaks to me. The formula really speaks to me. These metallic shades, they're just so gorgeous. I think they're mistake-proof. I, I just love them. So this is my large eyeshadow palette pick for, for 2020. I bet you guys can pick actually my next two picks for small eyeshadow palette and then single eyeshadows. But for the small eyeshadow palettes, I went with the Dior Quince. I'm just gonna talk about all of them in general because they redid their entire like eyeshadow quint line. They redid the formula. They've come out with new color stories. And the one that I've been loving and that I've been talking about incessantly is uh, Soft Cashmere. So if I had to pick one, this would definitely be my favorite. This shade up here, are we sensing a theme? This shade up here, this one down here, Gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. In comparison to the Natasha Denona shades that I have on my eyes, these are a little bit more neutral, a little bit more warm. These are very, very cool toned. So that one has, you see it has like almost like a peachy kind of undertone there. So these are a little bit warmer than uh, the shades that I picked for today's look from the Glam Palette. These shadows are, they're really, really creamy and bright and the mattes are, Oh, they're so smooth and I, I just love them. And then before we move on to the single shadow, the one other like shade in the Dior Quince that I wanted to point out that I really, really like more than I thought I would, which is probably why I wanna point it out, is this pink one. It's number 859, Pink Corolle, C-O-R-O-L-L-E. And I, I just wasn't expecting to like this one as much as I do, but it's really, really pretty. This pink in the upper left-hand corner, I really thought wasn't gonna be much. I was like, oh, okay, a light pink satin shade. There is something so bright and beautiful about this satin shade. It has such a beautiful, like cool tone to it where it almost, it almost looks like gloss on the eyes. I just was, I was blown away when I used that shade for the first time. And then the hot pink in here, isn't that just, it's so pretty. I think what I like about these pinks so much is that the undertone is very, very cool. There's like just enough purple in there, or I should say just enough blue in there so that they're not too red where, you know, if pink eyeshadow isn't your thing because they make you look sick, these, may work for you because there isn't as much red in there. There's a lot more blue undertone. And then you can see that they add some shades down here to really kind of pull that purple out. Really beautiful. I'm just 
like really surprised at how much I like this uh, pink quench from Dior. So that is my small eyeshadow pick for 2020. I love the formula. The color stories for a lot of them are really great, but soft cashmere is my favorite. And then my uh, single like cream eyeshadow pick is the Westman Atelier Le Jour iPods. I almost forgot the name of these iPods. So there's two versions. There's Le Jour, the day version, and then there's Les Nuits, which is the night version. I like the Le Jour a little bit more than the Nuit because it has this shade in here, which is tabba, tobacco, and Oh, will you just look at that? You can see how much I've used it. I was using this really kind of like nonstop when I got it over the summertime. And it's really just the perfect everyday shade. I can just throw this on and not really think about it too much. And you know, it's Western Atelier. So it's just easy to use, easy to wear, beginner friendly, just a great like formula and shade. So there's the tabac. I think I actually got a little bit of the pink in there, but I do know that when I get this on my lid, I feel like it looks a little bit peachier on my lid than it does in the pot and I I don't mind it at all because it just gives my eyes like a little hint of warmth and it's so beautiful. And the formula is not a very typical cream formula. It's more of like a putty. So I feel like it's just very easy to use because you could just go right in there and like, you know, rub your finger around almost like a lip balm and then just rub it on your eyes and you have like the perfect amount of pigment. It's not like you can grab too much or it's not like one of those pressed glitters in a little pot that like you have to be pretty delicate with. It's just really, really easy to use. The other two shades that come in this set, this one is Neige and you can, <laughs> You can see I go into the taba first and then I go into the neige and I usually just kind of put this on the inner corner of my eye. And then the deeper shade in here is chocolat and this is just a beautiful chocolate brown. And when I'm feeling like I need a little bit more, I'll add this to the outer corner. So it's just a wonderful, wonderful trio and these all magnetize together. I mean, they're so, so beautiful. These were out of stock for so long long. It was actually very frustrating, um, but these were out of stock for so long, but I believe they are back in stock. So anyway, I will link it down below. Um, but those are all of my eyeshadow picks for 2020. There were a lot of, <laughs> a lot of mascaras and I am not a mascara connoisseur, but I do feel like I learned a lot about what mascaras, what kind of mascaras I like and uh, the ones that I reach for every day, I started to really kind of try and analyze like, well, why? What is, <laughs> what is it about this mascara that uh, makes you want to reach for it? And the one that I picked is the Surat Noir Lash Tint. Um, one, I just think it's really innovative. It has this wand that looks like a screw at the end. So there are no bristles per se. And because I have such stubby lashes, I feel like you know, the bristles kind of help in like brushing it through your lashes. But because I have so few lashes and because they're so short, I feel like sometimes the bristles, I just have to be really, really careful. Otherwise I'll just get mascara everywhere because I just don't have a lot of lashes to like, you know, brush the uh, mascara wand through. But because this doesn't have bristles, it's just really, really easy to use. And I can get it right into the corner. I can use it up and down and get some of the lashes that, you know, I invariably can't get on the outer corner. I feel like it's just so easy to use. And I was really skeptical when I first got it. I was like, what is this? I'm like, <laughs> just a stick in a mascara. It was almost like it was missing the brush, but I am a total convert, total convert. I think it's just, it's just easy. It's just a lot easier to use. And if you're someone that likes to brush mascara on the top of your lashes, I know a lot of people like to do that. There's nothing easier than like a threaded end like that versus uh, bristles. And then in terms of the actual formula, uh, we'll move on from the wand. The formula is really nice. It keeps my lashes curled for a while. I, I don't want to say that it's like the best curling mascara out there, but it does keep them better than most. I'll say that. And it never ever smudges. It does take a little bit to get it off at the end of the day. Like I have to use like an oil-based um, eye makeup remover to get the mascara off fully. But other than that, it really is like a perfect mascara. So this is the one that really stood out to me in 2020, even though there were a ton of mascara releases. What was it? Is, was it like September? August or September, I felt like all I was doing was testing mascara. But anyway, this is the one that stood out to me. We're down to lips. So we're almost done. Thank God, because my throat is starting to hurt and I feel like I've been talking forever. Yes, I've been talking forever. Uh, let's talk about lipsticks. The one that I have on is 
one that really has stood out to me and I have neglected to mention them in my favorites. And it's because one is usually in my purse and then the others I actually tucked away into like the back of my drawer and I just kept forgetting to talk about them. Anyway, these are the posh lipsticks from Victoria Beckham Beauty. I have the shade Pose on. This one shade is probably my favorite by far. I do have a whole bunch of them and some are a little bit on the lighter side, some are a little bit on the warm side, but Pose, I think, is just a great like fall color for me. It's like a mid-tone brown with just a hint of pink in it and I love it. I love the formula of it because it's a little bit more pigmented than I thought it was gonna be when I first purchased them. I thought they were gonna be like a sheer lipstick. They are actually more like a highly moisturizing satin lipstick. And it looks like I have a gloss on over my lips. I do not. It is just these lipsticks. I really, really love them. I love the color range. You know, I'm a, I'm a nude lip fanatic. I just love the color range. I love the packaging. I love the, the skinnier, taller kind of like lip crayon uh, versus lipstick thing. And I definitely have talked about this before too, but the Click is so satisfying because especially when it comes to lipstick products, you just wanna make sure that the that lid is on tight, especially when you're gonna throw it into your purse. And it really is just so, oh, it's so satisfying. So this is one of my, one of my lipstick picks. This is like my, like everyday lipstick pick. Let's, let's call it that. <laughs> my other lipstick pick is uh, one that I just, I, I just think it's so special. I love the packaging. I love just everything about it. And it is the Byredo lipsticks. The packaging, I just love. I know some people thought it was really gimmicky or whatever, but you can actually twist the lid around so it does like more of an S or more of a, like a C curve. Anyway, I have been wearing two colors that I purchased a lot. One is Earth Dust, and this is like in their satin finish. This is such a beautiful nude shade, and the formula is, it's just such a great like satin lipstick. It feels great on the lips. It's very, very moisturizing. It doesn't have as much of a sheen as the Victoria Beckham ones. The Victoria Beckham ones are definitely like very, very moisturizing, but these are definitely more pigmented. These are kind of like a one and done kind of lipstick where you just need to like swipe once and you have all the pigment you need. And this color is just such a perfect nude. So that is Earth Dust. And this has been out of stock for a while. Hopefully it'll be in stock soon. Um, but the other shade you guys know that I've been loving is La Flame. And this is in a matte formula. And I really didn't want to get the matte formula. I thought, I don't really like mattes. I don't really wear matte lipsticks. I've been wearing this. It's so comfortable. It's such a great matte formula. The color is so, so great. I can't tell you how hard it is to find like a proper, like orange with a hint of red instead of red with a hint of orange, but a proper like orange with a hint of red is very difficult to find, but they just, Wow, they just hit the lotto with this one. So this is my other lipstick pick for 2020. My last lipstick pick, and I cheated because I was like, well, this is like a sheer lipstick. <laughs> um, but this is a Chanel Rouge Coco Flash. And this color, 132, I have to admit, I kind of forgot about it. Again, I just, I'm like inundated with a lot of lip products. But this color, I was going through my collection and all of my past videos, I was like, this needs to come out. I mean, it's a great like spring summer color, but this peachy tone with that slight gold in there is incredible. Absolutely incredible. Look at that flushed color. This is probably one of my favorite Rouge Coco Flash shades. It's so pretty. And this formula is something else. In comparison to the Victoria Beckham lipsticks, these are a little bit thicker. The Rouge Coco Flash really kind of feels like um, like an oil in stick kind of formula. Not not too oily, it's just, it has like a, a lighter kind of like looser, I hate that word, but I don't know how else to describe it. Like a lighter, thinner, maybe looser kind of uh, formula on the lips. So nourishing and definitely one of my favorite like lip formulas out there. And this shade, I just love. All right, moving on to lip gloss. Now this, this should have been really difficult for me, but I just, I knew which one I wanted to pick. Um, it definitely came out this year. There were a couple that I wasn't sure. I think actually they came out last year. Anyway, um, the Lisa Eldridge lip glosses. I 
love them. The formula, the colors, everything about them. The packaging is wonderful. I love the doe foot applicator. The formula is not only, you know, moisturizing and comfortable and all of those things that you want in lip gloss, but they really, really plump up my lips and not in any sort of like fake kind of like minty, irritating kind of way. They really just kind of like moisturize my lips so much that they kind of filled in the lines. I almost couldn't believe my eyes. I put them on and within a minute or so, I just felt like my lips just looked like filled in and I, I, I couldn't believe it. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. They are wonderful. And of course the colors that she picked are beautiful. Like absolutely, this Go Lightly is such a beautiful gloss. And this one, which I use probably the most is Muse. All right, and for lip liner, I just realized I forgot to talk about eyeliner, didn't I? Okay, let me talk about eyeliner. <laughs> then we'll talk about lip liner. Wow. Eyeliner, Wayne Goss. His essential eye cool pencils have been like my best friend ever since he released them. I have Precious Opal on right now. This is the one that's like a metallic brown. And um, I've been using Rich Hazel, which is just a straight up brown. I've been using the, the black one, which I think is Obsidian. And then he just came out with like, um, is it deep sapphire or sapphire and deep amethyst? Anyway, a very deep navy and a very deep purple. I just love the formula so much. So I um, tight line with it and then I put it in my waterline. They stay put, they don't smudge. And the best is they go on so easily. You can see here when I put it in my waterline, it's just whoop, it just goes right on. There's like no resisting. I don't feel like it's uh, patchy in any way. And I remember when I first used these, they went on so easily that I thought, oh, well, they're gonna smudge and they're not gonna stay on for too long, you know, whatever. They don't smudge, they don't smudge at all. I've been sitting here talking for like two hours and nothing. And I put it in my upper and lower waterline and they don't, fade or anything. So I love these eyeliners from Wayne Goss. These are wonderful. So for lip liners, these are reformulated lip liners and these are the Chanel Longwear Lip Pencils. And I have the shade Nude Brun on my lips um, underneath the Victoria Beckham um, Pose Posh Lipsticks. Wow, that was a lot of words. And I really like this reformulated uh, version of these lip pencils. This is the Rose Naturel. So this is a very natural like nude tone that is a little bit more on the pinky side. And then the one that I have on is the nude brun. And so this one is a little bit more brown. So that's this one over here. So I find these uh, lip pencils compared to Chanel's previous lip pencil formula, I find these to be less drying. The previous lip pencil formula um, it goes on smoothly. I love the colors, all of that. But I did feel like once they kind of set down, they were a little bit drying around the edges of my lips. And I do have extremely dry lips and I do suffer from eczema and I do get eczema on the top of my lip. And so I'm very sensitive to that. Like I can feel when my lip starts to feel like it's kind of like puckering up, <laughs> drying up. Um, and I felt that way. I feel that way actually with most lip pencils, but these are really great. I don't feel that with these. These are definitely long wear, but when I put them on, they glide on really, really easily. And then even though they set so that they're not gonna fade easily, I don't feel like they set down and dry down. There isn't that like drying feeling and they're, and they're great. They're really, really great. And I love the colors. They have like a whole new range of colors. I mean, they're really beautiful. So this was definitely, the lip liner release of 2020 that I was really enjoying. So that is it. That is it for this best of 2020. Wow, I'm losing my voice. <laughs> Please let me know what some of your favorites were down below in the comment section. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe down below if you haven't already, and I will see you in tomorrow's Mishmas video.